we are part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We are one in quality. The only difference is in, is in quantity. In our original constitutional position, we are part of the whole, just as the hand serves the body by bringing foodstuffs to the mouth. If we try to get some foodstuff and mash it up within the hand, the hand says, no, I will not let the stomach be the enjoyer, but rather I, the hand, will be the enjoyer. And I will directly take the foodstuffs through the hand and just start to mash it in the hand, that this this system will not work. An analogy to our situation, we have to stop trying to believe that we are the enjoyer, but rather we are part and parcel of the universal whole. We have a function, a particular function to play within that situation. So just as if as the hand would stop trying to enjoy the foodstuffs directly, but rather deliver it to the mouth so that the stomach can digest it, the energy will be distributed throughout the whole body, including the hand. So this is basically the essence of the booty yoga system. We stop trying to be the enjoyer of the material facilities, but rather understand our nature as part and parcel of a spiritual whole. The booty yoga is devotional service in this consciousness. This is a very, very important point about the booty yoga, that this is actual real yoga. Anyone can engage within this yoga of the booty yoga. You don't have to be a great philosopher. You don't have to be a great scientist. Although it doesn't hurt to be those things, but you don't have to be. That any person, no matter what their nature, whether it be simple or complicated, whether they be a neophyte on the path of spiritual enlightenment, or whether they be a person that's been searching for the truth for a very long time, anyone can change their consciousness from being self-centered to believing that we are the enjoyer of material facilities to understanding that we are part and parcel of the spiritual whole. Our role is to serve. That is the change in consciousness, to go from the belief that we are the master of all we survey to understand that no, but rather we are part and parcel of the universal spiritual whole by serving our particular role, which will be revealed over time gradually as we increase in knowledge, as we increase in purification through works. I'd like to read one more verse here, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 48, and the contents of the Gita summarized. This is the purport by Bhaktivedanta Swami. Krishna tells Arjuna that he should act in yoga. And what is that yoga? Yoga means to concentrate the mind upon the Supreme by controlling the ever-disturbing senses. So again, this is a feature of the Bodhi Yoga and the change of consciousness, is that while we do our works, we perform our activities, whatever they may be, the important thing is to change the consciousness. And yoga means to concentrate the mind upon the Supreme, the divine couple, by controlling the ever-disturbing senses. And the way to do that is as we work and perform our duties, we try to understand that we are not the center, we are not the supreme master, we are not the enjoyer of material facilities, but rather we are part of a universal spiritual whole. We come more and more to this understanding, the more bliss we will feel, the more we will understand our eternal nature, and the more that our senses will become purified. I'm just going to go ahead and move through some of the information so that we can come to the conclusion. Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 2, verse 49, contents of the Gita summarized, purport by Bhaktivedanta Swami. This is a, a part of the purport. As already explained, Buddha Yoga means transcendental loving service to the Lord. Such devotional service is the right course of action for the living entity. Only misers desire to enjoy the fruit of their own work just to be further entangled in material bondage. Except for work in Krishna consciousness, all activities are abominable because they continually bind the worker to the cycle of birth and death. One should therefore never desire to be the cause of work. Everything should be done in Krishna consciousness for the satisfaction of Krishna. Misers do not know how to utilize the assets of riches when they acquire by good fortune or by hard labor. One should spend all energies working in Krishna consciousness, and that will make one's life successful. Like the misers, Unfortunate persons do not employ their human energy in the service of the Lord. It may seem like a simple point if we just change our consciousness from a selfish, self-centered, enjoying consciousness to understanding that we are part and parcel of the supreme whole, that we are the same in quality, but not in quantity. This is so simple. How can this be the key to success? But it is. If we understand that the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 
that Bhaktivedanta Swami are reliable sources of knowledge, that this is the key to freeing ourselves from the cycle of birth and death. This is a method so that a person will not have to face death again. And even in this very lifetime, at the end of our incarnation in this particular body, that it will not be like ordinary death, that actually we will be immediately transferred to our original nature, to our original back home, back to Godhead situation of eternity, bliss, and knowledge. It will not be a situation that is involving intense suffering and something that is beyond our control, but actually it will be the sign of our ultimate victory. I'll just go ahead and read one more verse. This is Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 60, 60, contents of the Gita summarized, purport. There are many learned sages, philosophers, and transcendentalists who try to conquer the senses, but in spite of their endeavors, even the greatest of them sometimes fall victim to material sense enjoyment due to the agitated mind. The senses can be completely controlled only by the strength of devotional service to Krishna. Also, the example of fire is sometimes given. As the small flames within burn everything within the room, similarly, Lord Vishnu, situated in the heart of the yogi, burns up all kinds of impurity. The Yoga Sutra also prescribes meditation on Vishnu and not meditation on the void. This Bhuti Yoga system of devotional service or works in Krishna consciousness is a kind of a protection because the mind can always be diverted in so many ways. Even so many great learned sages, philosophers, and transcendentalists sometimes are not able to conquer the se- who are tr- even trying by very great strenuous endeavor to conquer the senses, may fall victim to sense enjoyment. But if we learn the art of Bhuti Yoga or work and devotional service, that is a type of protection for us. Just try to remember these simple factors about the Bhuti Yoga system and to change your consciousness from being self-centered to enjoying the material assets to understanding your nature as part and parcel of the Supreme Whole. It is a personal relationship with the Supreme Personality of God, the divine couple, and that over time it will become more and more purified and more and more obvious. So I'd like to thank everyone for listening. If you'd like to go to my website, protectacow.typepad.com, there's more information. So thank you very much for listening, and I'll talk to you next time.